what would happen if we use sound to create the shape of our guitar? What if I told you this guitar already has a sound, even though it doesn't exist yet? And what if I told you that sound created the shape of everything? Before I can explain all that, we have to understand ratios. And the twelfth root of two. Ratios are a mathematical relationship between any two things. We use ratios everywhere. We use them in cooking. We use them in building pyramids or creating great works of art. We also use them to understand the fundamental principles of the universe we live in. One of the most common ratios that everyone's heard of is the golden ratio or the golden spiral, approximately 1.618. Michelangelo and Da Vinci have used it even the Twitter logo is based on it. One of the reasons why it's so popular is because people seem to find it in nature, which is where we see the golden spiral in the seashell. But that's not the only ratio we find in nature. There's another ratio that we see everywhere and that you experience every day. So I had a thought, what if we used that ratio in order to create the shape of this guitar? That ratio is the 12th root of two. I'm sure some of the luthiers out there right now are catching on to where I'm going with this. So in order to do this, we have to find a base number. Think of it as the size of our canvas. And that canvas will then be divided into different subdivisions, all divided by the 12th root of 2. This will make more sense as we go along. The number I chose was 25.5 inches. And that's basically because that's the scale length of the strings I'm going to use. The scale length of the string is basically just the length of the string. It's exactly what it sounds like. And basically, it's one of the biggest determinants to the tone and the feel of the guitar. So I figured that was probably the best way or the best bass number to use. The 12th root of 2 is approximately 1.056 off into infinity, but 1.056 works for us. This means that everything, the width of the guitar, the length of the horn, the length of the bottom horn, the headstock, everything has to conform to some ratio of 25.5 inches multiplied by 1.056 in a sequence. But guitars aren't all straight lines, and so I needed to figure out some way of creating my own golden spiral. And so what I'm doing here is I'm basically creating arcs based on 25.5 inches multiplied by 1.056. By connecting these arc segments together, we can create our own custom spiral. We'll limit all the curves of this guitar to the curves of the spiral. And so with all that out of the way, I can finally get started designing this guitar. I'm sure some of you have figured this out by now, but I bet you a lot of you are asking, what's so special about the 12th root of 2? Quite simply, it is the ratio between one fret and the next on a guitar fretboard. It's the ratio of modern equal tempered tuning, approximately 1.056. To keep this video short, I'll link to a video down below which explains modern tuning. For our purposes, it's enough to know that this distance is not just the location of one fret to the next, it is the change in frequency from one note to the next note. So for example, if we start with the A note, which is a note that vibrates at a frequency of 440 hertz per second, to get to the next note, we multiply 440 by 1.059. We get 466.16 hertz. That's our A sharp. If we multiply that by the same number, we get 493.88, which is our B note, the next fret up the neck. In this way, each curve of this guitar is determined by a sound. And you may be surprised to learn that sound isn't just determining the shape of this guitar, but sound is actually what determines the shape of the entire universe and everything in it. From the greatest galactic clusters to the great void, getting back to our guitar design. In the intro episode, we created the spirit animal of this guitar. Using this as a template, I then used the curves available to try and create that feel in an actual playable guitar. It had to be comfortable and functional and it had to play really, really well. 
None of this matters if it just ends up being some visual creation. My intention is for this to be a musical instrument, not a work of art or some science project. But I had one more limitation to contend with. The sound of the shape. I said earlier that this guitar has a sound, and the design does. Every curve used can be seen as a note or a frequency. For example, if I use the curve that corresponds to the 7th fret, we get a perfect 5th. If I use the curve that corresponds to the 4th fret, we get a major 3rd. In this way, the shape has a sound. By limiting the curves and the dimensions that I used, I could determine the sound that creates the shape. For the top of the guitar, I chose the major scale. And the reason for that is that the major scale is kind of sort of the mother scale that gives rise to all the modes, Phrygian and Dorian and Mixolydian. I've always seen this very much the way white light when passed through a prism creates all these different colors. So I thought it was appropriate. For the back of the guitar, I chose the melodic minor scale by adding the minor third and the sharp seventh. I went through a bunch of options, but I thought ultimately that this would capture that dark mysteriousness of space. I said earlier that all the structures and shapes of the universe were created by sound. Believe it or not, the universe had what is called the Cosmic Acoustic Era back in its pre-rock days before Marshall Amps and Free Love Concerts at Woodstock. According to the Big Bang Theory, which we'll question in another episode, this was in the early universe. In this era, the universe was basically a plasma of charged particles, mostly charged protons and electrons. This proton baryon fluid allowed sound to propagate throughout the universe from one end to the other, creating high pressure densities and low pressure densities. And basically, the cosmos rang like a bell. Okay, 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 okay. I know exactly what you guys are thinking. Like, what is this guy on? Pretty good shit, actually. But that's not why I'm doing this. I've actually believed for a long time that um, one of the best ways to get better is to just challenge yourself by giving yourself limitations. Orson Welles, Igor Stravinsky, uh, Rick Beato, <laughs> um, all of them have basically said in some different form or another that it's the limitations that breeds creativity. And I've always found that to be true. In many ways, it's kind of like, you know, as a musician, when you learn new chords or you learn new compositional techniques, you learn a new set of rules and you end up coming up with something that you wouldn't have come up with before. And one of the things I wanted from this guitar is I wanted it to sort of be its own thing. And it all worked out really, really well. So I ended up with five different designs that I really, really liked. And there's the final one, which I'll show you guys in a minute. And I really, really kind of sort of, I'm in love with that design. But there was another one that I did as well. And it, it's something I would have never had come up with. So here's the thing about that guitar. I would have never had come up with that design. It's completely different than anything else I've ever done. A friend of mine called it like my deconstruction phase. And I kind of sort of really dig that. Anyway, here's the thing. I'm going to build that guitar because I have to and I can't wait. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to start building it while I build a great guitar build-off guitar. Um, if you want to follow that build, and I'll explain what's going on in that sketch, um, just like and subscribe, you know all that stuff. Um, anyway, let's get back to the universe. We kind of sort of left it hanging. At the end of the acoustic era came the recombinant phase at approximately 380,000 years after the Big Bang. The cosmos at that point had cooled down enough to allow the electrons and the protons to combine into matter. The cosmos went silent. But those sound waves created high and low density areas of matter. Over time, the high density areas through gravity attracted more and more matter to themselves, and the low density areas gave up matter, creating great voids in space. We can see these remnants to this day. We know it as the cosmic background radiation. The CMB represents the afterglow of the early universe. Those tiny temperature fluctuations are the remnants of the acoustic era. The distribution of matter, the seeds of the cosmic structures, spanning the entire universe and its evolution ever since, were made, the shape of it all, by sound.
So let's see what we ended up with. To start off with, I'm going to do the headstock the way I've been doing them lately with the tuners going sideways. Um, I like that kind of sort of configuration. I think it's going to look really cool. The lower part, that bar you see across, is going to be actually made out of metal. So whether that's going to be aluminum or copper or brass, I'm not really sure yet, but I think it'll add additional stability to the headstock. I don't think it really needs it, but I think it'll be really cool. So here at the body, what you're going to see is where the arrow is pointing, the wenge is going to be viewed back to front. So in that little neck joint, you're going to see the purple heart, the ash, and the wenge. I think it's going to be a really cool effect at that point. As to the pit guard, it's going to be made out of ash and flush with the rest of the body, with the trim being done in purple heart as well. There's no pickups shown here because I still haven't finished the design for the pickups. Um, but those two squares you see are going to be the hollows um, that'll be routed out in order to house the pickups. And here she is. This is the entirety of the guitar. Um, I'm really, really digging the shape of it. It's not what I expected going in, um, but I really, really like it. And I think it captures the spirit of what I was looking for. So I'm really excited about this. I think this is one of my favorite designs so far, and I'm looking forward to building this thing. So on the Voyager probe, there was a disc that basically had information, music from Earth, and it contained a star map. And that map is the location of our sun in the Milky Way galaxy. I decided that I wanted to play honor and tribute to that. And so I'm gonna put that inlay of that star map right on the fretboard. And right around the seventh fret, there's going to be a tiny pale blue dot. A mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. 